Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and I'm here with a very special guest today. Today, we have Mike Wagner of The Mike Wagner Show. He has a very successful podcast and an amazing story to tell, and he's here today to tell himself a little about himself and his secrets to a successful podcast. So can you tell us a little about yourself and what you do? Absolutely, Stacy. Just want to say hello out there and uh, everyone in the audience is out there. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And um, thanks for having me on, Stacy. And of course, as you know, um, you know, I, I, I have. I am Mike Widener from the Mike Widener Show. And by the way, let me just say it's powered by Sonic Web Studios. You can visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. And it's also brought to you by official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia Molson's Yeah Missing, available on Amazon. You can also uh, check out my merchandise at the themikewidenershow.com with T-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, throw pillows, tote bags, and more. You can also uh, take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device and subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel and follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter. And also... Um, Follow Stacy as well, too. So that's about me. First of all, that's how I introduced. But, um, you know, myself uh, going to the show that uh, I'm going to go to the way, way back machine. So are you ready, Sherman? I am ready. <laughs> that's why I always tell people just go to the way back machine. If you ever watch um, those old, um, P what was it, Peabody and Sherman cartoons, or if you're in England, the Doctor Who, we just hop into the time machine. Or actually, I was... Um, you know, grew up in uh, Wisconsin for the first nine years. I was born in Milwaukee, raised in Racine for nine years. And um, I actually got uh, exposed to the world of broadcasting that um, the very first I was told that my mom and dad got a little transistor radio. Remember those things? You walk I around, you, know, you had AM radio. Well, they actually put one right by my crib and try and get me to calm down, listen to WTMJ and the Green Bay Packers. This is like probably, <laughs> probably the younger days. It's like, you know, put a little transistor radio, trying to get me to calm down. And that's what I was told. And, and as time grew and I started getting more interested into music and I was a, a sports guy as well, too. You know, I, I loved, um, you know, found the Milwaukee Brewers, Chicago Cubs and um, everything else. We'll get into that later that um, we lived in. Um, in, in Racine later on, we moved into um, a duplex where you had these walls so thin. You had these neighbors that were just cranking up in their quad stereo, which is, um, what was it, Paul Rivera and the Raiders, and they kept pounding and pounding. And then and then instead of, you know, going to the door and say, turn it down, I go and say, hey, turn it up. We love it. So mm -hmm. that was like our radio right there, too. And then um, I later, um, you know, picked up some interest, you know, just uh, following the weather, I you know, wrote to WTMJ, our um, Milwaukee affiliate all the time. You know, I got some freebies, you know, T-shirts, you know, weather charts, and even those uh, thermometers, you know, like those rain gauges you um, you you, uh, you put in your backyard. So, you know, I was just doing that. And then I also bought some records, too, you know, little 45s. And my dad goes to all these secondhand stores and um, and also, like, with Goodwill, Salvation Army. And I'd be sitting there just playing them even on rainy days. And so I, I would be doing that. And then we later moved to... um outside Chicago where um where where my dad later um he worked for mobile oil as a regional manager that uh he he his friend Sam got me this uh weather rate it has AM FM weather and goes oh I think you listen to weather well instead of weather which half the time they work I start going into my room and I start you know pick up these uh radio stations like I get I pick them up in Detroit St. Louis Boston New York Nashville at WSM or Dallas at WOAI in San Antonio was in the top 40. And the hot and the better and the hot top 40 station was in Little Rock and did better than Chicago. And I also listened to uh you know stations in um Des Moines, Minneapolis, and I picked up a uh, Denver and also picked up Salt Lake City. And I realized this is great. And then I also got to listen to uh, hockey games like um you know on on the radio on those big stations. So and of course, you know, you can't do that these days. You got the internet. So I picked that up and then you know, later just let me to do a little sports. I was going to be a sportscaster, but, you know, after, um, you know, just writing for my paper and um, also, you know, interview some sports people and whatever else. And I just start listening to the music. You know, there was Cat Stevens. There was Yes. And there was also uh, like with, um, you know, Simon and Garfunk, you know, you know, just some stuff back in the day. And then how I got the radio bunk that just really bit me. And you know what? Where I was going to school at the uh, Harper College in uh, Palatine, Illinois, and this is back in 1982, where I was a computer science major because computers was the big thing, and you made your money because you know, I mean, you, you had to learn like was it basic, COBOL, Fortran, and uh, everybody had a Commodore and Atari. Remember those things? Oh the my Atari, God! Just, yes. Um, yeah, you just um, you know play with those things, and then it's like you know you know pong beep beep like that. You learn how to program those. I had fun operating those things, but programming. 
forget it. I had that. So, <laughs> so I had that. And then um, I later went up to a booth and I figured, well, I, I want to find a little something to do. So I, I saw this booth where it says, uh, hey, you want to be a DJ? So I walk up. And as soon as I was getting ready to, uh, you know, fill out the application, felt like a bug just bit me right here. You know, like those Spider-Man movies where it's like you get bit by the bug, like yes. Peter Parker turns to Spider-Man. Well, I think that <laughs> I think that bug turned out to be a radio bug. Where as soon as I signed, I said yes, and then I just joined. I did about you know a show a week for a couple hours, and then I expanded to doing some news, did a little bit of sports, play by play, and everything else. And then I realized when I got to South Illinois, this is what I really wanted to do. I got involved with WSIU, WIDB, and Illinois Media Services. I uh, did some voice work for um, out in Kentucky, Missouri, and um, parts of Southern Illinois. And you know, I just realized this is what I really wanted to do. And I came back up in 1987. I later got into uh, number, number stations in the Chicago area. And I also did some mobile DJing uh, as an MC, a host, and um, you, you know, whatever else. And then you know, life took a turn. You know, I got married. My wife, Serena, on a biz, business venture. And um, we kind of just took a little time out to raise a young family. And then I got into some audio visual. I got into management, warehousing and everything. And then I think what really kicked it in was back in, um, I think it was 2006, where I was asked by a number of people, how can we not in the radio business? I said, well, it, it was because, you know, there was just so many things going on. And it's like, you know, they urged me to get back in. My mom just gave me a thing on um with uh you know how do we have voiceover guys? So it's like I did that, I did some uh, ads for other people, and then I later went ahead and um you know got into uh Milwaukee doing some real estate voiceovers. I did some uh radio between Milwaukee and Chicago before I got called to uh Bismarck, North Dakota by an Arizona consulting firm. That's why I went to KDKT, become an intern general manager, later a consultant. I did some voice work there and worked with consultants for three years and then KFYR came calling me or I actually reached out to them. They liked my work and I've been with since August 2010. And then the Mike Wagner show came up by a California publicist who says, hey, how'd you like to interview some guests? At first I said, no, 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 don't want to do it. And I was terrified to do uh, interviews because I had a bad experience, but it was a journalism background and it didn't fit. And after right. a second time, I said, okay, how was, how much, what does it take? Nothing. I send you guests. I'm like, does it cost anything? Nope. Send them over. And that's how the whole Mike Wagner show starts. Sandy Helberg was my very first guest, you know, back in um, uh, August 2018 and 900 great guests, including yourself later. Here we are. Now, do you have a specific like podcast in space? Would you just like, were you, do you have a special niche or do you just like to, you know, interview everybody? Like what, what do you enjoy doing? Like, what do you do in your podcast? Okay. Th think of uh, tonight, the tonight show with Johnny Carson. Think of the Johnny Cast special. Mm -hmm. And think of, um, let's see, I'm trying to think what else. Think of classic radio back in the day where you had no edit buttons, no coughing. You know, you know you'd know, make all kinds of noises. And then you also um, mix in with, uh, I'm trying to uh, best describe it. It's simply just going back to days of, um, you know, just, just a variety show. Like, you know, like Dick Cavett, Ed Sullivan. You know, that type is like bring people on, let them do their stuff. Right. And, you know, talk right. about themselves and everything. And that's what I'm seeing lacking in today's podcast. I think today's podcasts are way too niche. They're way too narrow. And, of course, they're way too specialized. Like, what happened in the days of just, you know, and just pick and choose, you know, your favorite guest is on? Great. You want to check this out? Great. If you don't like it? Okay. Wait till next time. You know, it, that's what a variety show is. It's like, you know. You never know what you get. You're gonna be right. surprised. So, so that's what I was, um, you know, focusing on too. Is like just going back to the days of like, you know, just Johnny Carson, Johnny Cash, and um, or have like say, um, Jay Leno. He's one of my favorites on Tonight Show. I love staying up as a kid watching the Tonight Show. With oh Johnny yeah, Carson. me too. <laughs> you know, you have these animals and everything get on stage and um, you know, do these magic acts like who is it, the Great Kazoo or something, and then you have people sing up there and everything. It's like. I miss those days of having just a variety show. Just have a little fun out yeah, there. Yeah, so, exactly. So, so that's why that's what was my what I was doing too. And then I realized that it was just like instead of having those uh, interviews, you have to have a set of questions. Read off. It's like you're on a you're on a casual conversation over a cup of coffee with a good friend, and that's what I do generally. So. That's great. Now, how long did it take you to grow your audience? Because, you know, you were telling me a story last time we talked how, you know, you started with only a few people. And then over time, you grew into this humongous audience. Like, you know, how long did it take you to uh, grow into that audience? Uh, 
I have to go back to the way machine on that one. And I'm <laughs> speaking myself when I had to tell you to go to the way back machine, Sherman. So, you know, I, I just had that. So I would probably say the feedback that I got from the Sandy Helberg interview was that, um, you know, there are quite a few people liked it and they asked about, you know, Simon Helberg. It's like, you know, you know, how's he doing and uh, what's he up to? And then I later had, uh, you know, a few other Tammy Locke, Eddie Deason. and I had, um, you know, a couple of our uh, unknowns who got their start and they started making it big too. And then I started getting some feedback from people that, uh, hey, this is great. This is, um, you know, fun to listen to. And I also posted on Facebook and I later took it from KFYR and over to create my own podcast. I had some people follow me. And then I also picked up some um, other listeners from other groups and also other platforms, you know, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and uh, everything else just to get, give it a listen. And then it was just, you know, the whole thing. You remember that commercial, the shampoo, where I said, uh, this shampoo's so great, I told two of my friends. And they told two of their friends, and they told two of their friends, and so on and so on. That's how it worked. And so yeah. it's like when word was getting out there that uh, this is really fun to listen to, people start building more and more. And then they also got the attention of, um, you know, other publicists who want to join in. And my mission was just to help people out and give people their starts, give people their exposure and everything else. So right. it started growing and growing like a snow ball and then it got to the point where it got to be what was it december 2020 where i hit my peak where it's like i finally got known in the um, podcast world finishing at 162 in the top 200 in the u.s and um it was uh with uh, marilyn mccoo and billy davis jr with a christmas song i had sherry nelson on and i think i had um i'm trying to think there was another guest or two that um was pretty big i ended up with about like 10 to 50 thousand of viewer and listeners combined for that month and for that period, which really put me over the top. So I'm just keeping a very consistent level and I'm looking forward to bigger and better things. I've got some bigger guests uh, coming up with um, bigger names, bigger agencies and um, and whatever else. And, and uh, there is a, one thing I will break out here that my show will be on Discord and it's going to be pretty soon. And when's it going to come out? We don't know. So you'll be the first to know about the Mike Wagner show is going to extend on Discord. That's awesome. That's really great. So basically, you know, it's just it takes time, but it builds up. It's just word of mouth, having a good show. Now, is this something you know, I know so many people that would love to do, but they're afraid of doing it. What kind of advice do you have for those people who are really, you know, because podcasts are big now, you know, and a lot of people want to do it, but they're like, oh, my God, there's so many podcasts out there. You know, how am I going to ever get noticed? How am I going to, you know, I don't know if I could actually do it. You know, what do you say to those people that are a little bit unsure and a little scared? about doing it but want to do it well th think of the think of the verse from uh, america what was it um, lonely people but there's an offshoot don't give up until you drink from the silver cup you never know until you try so the thing i just tell people is you never know about this it's like you know try a few episodes you know try it with um some someone from a band that you know try it with um someone from your family who's like somewhat famous or even have like um a conversation with your dog or maybe like a, a dog owner or you know, try like, um, say, somebody who's been in a community play or, you know, talk to somebody in family who's um, like, say, runs a business or something. So it's like, you know, you just got to learn practice. You got to learn the art of uh, conversation, which is basically just conversing with people. You know, I've had like, you know, read a set of questions. And I say, if you're going to read a set of questions, you may as well give them to a fifth grader who can read. So <laughs> you, just, you just have something like that. And I've been on podcasts who just read off questions and it is annoying. I guess right. I have people say that, you know, that style is annoying. So you actually, the secret is you have to have a conversation. You have to be a good conversationalist and you also have to listen as well. So the thing I just tell people is just simply, is just having a conversation. Don't be intimidated. And uh, there's um, podcast platforms out there that'll teach you how to do things. YouTube can also teach it. And if you hit or if you hit a record button on, on a computer or I hit um, you know record on, on a tape player or anything like that, then you should be you should be able to do it. So I think the thing you have to do is like just try with a few friends and um, you know, try to get a few people listen and get a few people listen and just critique and just, you know, you know, hey, what do you think? What can I do to uh, make it better? So the thing I just tell people out there is just like, don't worry about being number one. Joe Rogan's got that number one for years and years, and he'll always be number one. Don't even try to be number one like Joe Rogan. I mean, I'm not. So as I create your own number one out there with your inner, inner circle and then encourage them to be their own number ones in their inner circle. You know, just like with your podcast, it's like, you know, 
you're pretty much number one in your circle. You encourage everyone to be number one in their circles. And you have a really unique podcast out there, you know, about about your um your your story about health, epilepsy, and of course, you know, the complete herbal guy, which is totally amazing. My wife really loves your stuff, and um, <laughs> and I, I tell everybody to go out there and buy the books. So you know, that's the whole thing. You have to go, you know, just uh just sample with a few friends, and then you can also uh, start building up and building up and just gets practice and practice consistent. I mean, Michael Jordan didn't be uh, a superstar overnight. He went out there and practiced and exactly. practiced and practiced and practiced. And of course, Eric Clapton uh, didn't be a success overnight. He practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced. Or even like Robert De Niro wasn't a success. Practice, practice, practice. That's why I tell everybody all the time. You have to be very consistent and, and you have to be very reliable and you'd be very, very dedicated to do it. So my... My suggestion to all the podcasters out there, don't be afraid to try it. Try it with a few people and see what you think. I think that's great advice. And you know what? The best thing I like what you said is don't compare yourself to other podcasts or other, you know, celebrity people out there. You know, you have to do something that makes you happy, something you enjoy and work with what you're good at and work within your own circle. And I love that you, you ask, say, ask, you know, for, you know, for someone to critique you because people sometimes don't like, you know, constructive criticism, but it's ac actually the best thing for you because, you know, constructive criticism can make you grow into a huge success because I learned through my own years that it's not what we like it's what the audience likes and sometimes what what we really get into is not what the majority of the audience out there gets into so we have to you know reach out and ask for feedback feedback I think is a number one don't you think that is agreeable as well too you can also say take it or leave it and you can also uh, you know make your own modifications and whatever else and um and of course the whole thing about the podcast there's one thing i do want to add is that um the the show is not all about the host it's all about the guest so yes. it's basically making the guest the, the star you're making the guest you know the um the Andy Warhol of 15 minutes the um you're making a guest um you know hollywood celebrity you know for that 15 minutes or 30 minutes, 45, an hour, however long, you know, telling their story, sharing their story, sharing their product and um, sharing their experience. So that's what the whole thing is all about. You know, back in the day, you had to get out of these networks and um, it was very hard to do. And now with the podcast, I mean, I, I think what what's, I think what's the um, number now? I think it was like, uh, what, like 2 million, 3 million, 5 million podcasts out there all over the world. And that number yeah. keeps growing and growing and growing. And of course, you know, don't worry about, you know, having like um, overload or whatever it is. Like you do what's comfortable in your circle and it's going to take some time. Something's going to be catching a fire or a spark as well too. So, you know, just, you know, just have it within your circle. So I, so basically it's just what you want to do. It's just as a hobby pleasure or you want to try to make something out of it so you know, encourage everybody to get out there and join groups you also um subscribe and you also um if, if you're a podcaster and you're looking for guests you'll know, sign up for a radio guest list and they can help you with that you know give you some guests and uh, everything else and i've had guests on the show as well too that sent me some guests sent me people want to be interviewed and everything and um there, there's always um you know room for that too so and there's plenty of podcasts out there that um people can listen and goes Hey, I want this guy. I want to be on that show. Or you can ask them questions. I had about maybe I've had five people um over the weekend, you know, ask me about uh podcasts, how do I get on and everything. So it's like, you know, weekends you think it's uh that um that's gonna be a gun out there, cut the lawn, relax, have a beer, go out. It's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Today's social media, everybody's out there 24-7, 365. And whatever you do, squeeze that time in, will you? So <laughs> I agree. I agree. You know, and it's, it's all about the passion, I think too. It's, you know, you have to do something that you love. And if you love speaking to people, if you love to learn about others, if you want your audience to learn about these interesting people, I think passion is a key. It's not about success. It's not about money because a lot of people get into it. And the first thing they think is I want to be a superstar. I want to make millions of bucks. I want to do this. I want to do that. They're comparing themselves to the, you know, Grant Cardone and all these people that are high up on the ranks but it's 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 about it you know doing doing it because it's your passion because you love it you're not trying to do it to make an extra buck you're doing it because you love it it's something inside of you and you enjoy doing it don't you think that is totally agree as well too and of course uh, i like how you got set up with your books too. you got empower yourself you got um 
you move your uh, chair over that way. Oh. Positive and, <laughs> and graduate journal. You got epilepsy. And um, I mean, you got all those books out there. And that's a smart way to do it as well, too. So another thing I want to get people is like, don't be afraid to display your merchandise. I mean, look at these tote bags right here. My daughter and uh, my wife, Serena, has got one, too. And I've had people ask. I've got some hoodies up there ready for wintertime. I've got that ready. And I had, this is my number one seller. I pillow. love that pillow. <laughs> I absolutely love that pillow. Yeah, it's like you can do things. You can decorate, you can punch it, you can sleep with it, you can have your dog <laughs> sit on it and everything else. And um, and, and, and of course, you know, I, I got a really good idea from, uh, I think it was John Legend, one of the Super Bowl commercials. He was doing some kind of pillow or whatever. It's like, hey, you can sleep with me, but not physically. So that's just one of the key things as well, too. I ask, uh, hey, can I sleep with you? He says, yes, but not physically. You can have my pillow. So I have that. And of course, I got these T-shirts as well, too. I got long sleeve. I got baseball jerseys. There's tank tops for women as well, too. Women's T-shirts, kid T-shirts and everything else. And I'm planning on having a coffee mug uh, sometime soon. But um, so I guess if you're wondering why uh, why I have this mug with me, I'm going to get a little story about this. I won't go off topic here when real inspiration starting the mike wagner show was actually i was in south dakota back in 2018 and um it was back in august and uh, i was asked at the time and i was getting a little bored stale what i was doing and and my my serena said yeah i think we need a break we need to go somewhere so i took my two boys and serena and we went to the black hills of south dakota i mean we went through uh deadwood we went through Leeds, uh lead we went through um sturgis and of course you know the bikers are pretty cool up there. It's it's not a rowdy town or anything like that. Just regular folks having a good time. We went to um, the, the Jefferson Memorial and we went to uh, Crazy Horse, which is amazing. And one of the guests I had on the show actually, you know, was inspired by Devil's Tower in Wyoming. So we had that. And then while everybody was going, while we're kept running to the store, we forgot this, this broke, that broke. And, um, you know, we need this. We need that. We kept running to the store. My, my my boys were buying all, all kinds of uh, trinkets and toys. Serena was looking for jewelry. <laughs> and here I was. I found this Denver Broncos coffee mug on sale for 15 bucks. I said, I'm going to take South Dakota home with me because we're right by Denver. I realized that. <laughs> and I kind of failed my geography. I thought we were expecting Minnesota. It's like, you, know, you see Colorado Rockies, Denver Broncos. Crap. It's like, what? <laughs> we've never been that way. And so I picked it up for 15 bucks and I just... Showed all the times my memory of uh, starting the Mike Wagner show. The reason why I was 15 bucks, the Broncos were really bad that year. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I just have that. I have some coffee with it too. And um, I'm planning on um, also grinding my own coffee one day too. And I get some, um, you know, gifts coming in and, um, you know, people send me stuff, even coffee and cheeses and, <laughs> and uh, little bottles of this and that and everything else. And um, I may have some, and I had some of um, Kenny Arnoff's uh, Kaboom coffee, which uh, was really good. So I had some of that and, um, you know, quite others. And um, I also had some celebrities who were great chefs. They sent me cookbooks, sent me some recipes. So I encourage you by talk about food, talk about how healthy it is. If you're all gourds, that's fine. You know, stuff like that. So <laughs> <laughs> let me ask you a question. Where do you get all this energy? energy <laughs> every time well, i see you, you're bopping all over the place <laughs> well, well i got the coffee first of all and uh i have a thing of coke and i've got some iced tea today so i got some of that okay so and sugar then, and caffeine is your thing <laughs> and, and then i also got some water as well too as a chaser all right that's good you're flushing out the toxins all right there that's we go. right and then i have a little bit of chocolate i'll have some pizza my dj uh, food days if you're working in overnights you had to order a pizza and of course you had some <laughs> chips right by you had some healthy popcorn and um everything else so that was like the staple of djs you had to have your pizza you have your your, your chips you had to have your um chocolate you had to have your um your soda and everything else because yeah, it, it, it's got high fructose corn syrup. Everybody says, oh, it's bad for you. It's bad. It's bad. But reality, my my professor in radio TV, Dr. Hillard, who was um, a major network announcer for CBS News, he actually uh, drank, drank, keeps drinking Diet Pepsi. And I thought, man, it's just like, what's this guy drinking Diet Pepsi? Is that the, 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 the corn syrup in the uh, Pepsi itself actually coats your vocal cords? You know, the water will hydrate it, but the coffee will dry it up. And the, and, and the Coke is just, you know, it coats your vocal cords. to make you perform better. I and never I've heard lived that. that ever since. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I used to have a, a great uncle and he used to take, he used to take, um, he used to take a uh, um, soda and then he would drop a penny in the soda and then he'd come back like five, six hours later. And yeah, as a trick for everybody, you know, the kids 
penny would be gone because it disintegrated in the soda. <laughs> so, oh my goodness. <laughs> let me ask you a question. With um with all these interviews you've done, you've done hundreds of interviews. Do you have any funny stories to tell or maybe someone that just caught you by surprise and you were just like in awe, like you just didn't know what to say because they just caught you by surprise, like any type of funny stories? I, I think I had some guests where it's just like, you know, they've had, you know, dogs bark, cats jump in front and uh, birds squawk and everything else. I had Lorraine landed on my show and she had a couple of cats jump in front of her and um, <laughs> I, I'd stop the interview and says, hey, tell me about uh, your, your favorite furry pet and uh, everything. And uh, we found out that she's an animal lover and also uh, an animal advocate. So so half the time we were interviewing about her uh, career for upcoming film and it was also about pets. So we expanded yeah. it. It was like an hour talking about herself, her movies and our pets. And Sadie Katz was on the show as well, too, talking about her upcoming film. And um, it was also Christmas in Fargo, which did really well last year. And, um, you know, she talked about a couple of cats jumped in front of her. And um, we spent like about good 30 minutes, um, you know, not just talking about the movie and her career, but talking about cats. You know, you know, we, we just had that. And then I had um, already hopping on my show back in the early day where we we're just swapping stories about, uh, you, know, you know, how people dream of this dream of that and everything yeah. else and i think he showed a really funny story i busted laughing i think we were laughing straight for five minutes and all of a sudden i forgot what we were talking about and he's like i forgot what we're on doing so you know we, we had some of that and i think um some of the other fun funnier moments i had was um i had uh rolf sattler on the show where um he he uh does his book about plants and everything, and he was a th doing a thing about laughing. And as he started laughing for some reason, I th uh, thought, "What's so funny?" And he says, "It's actually a way to uh, get people to, um, to basically just, um, you know, relax before a test. We're doing a laughing exercise." And I said, "It actually worked." Right. So I was I was doing some of that, and I think I'm trying to, um, I think I'm trying to think of the other funny moments. Um, we we had on a show too, so I I think I've had so many, but those are the ones. That <laughs> <laughs> Those are ones that just stood out to me. It's just like I think the ones I like, you know, you know, you know, dogs jump in front of you, cats jump in front of you, or, or, or I've had like say with, um, you, you know, something um might might happen as well too. And um, I I I think it was just you know all physical and whatever else. But I'm right. sure more funny moments will pop up or even sharing some stories. But um, I have to go through my my journal and just see you know some of the funny stories I've had like you know you know, over 900 guests, it's hard to figure out what's right. the funniest of all, but I love animals. And when they, when they uh, you know, come in and interrupt them and say, go, Hey, um, you know, tell us about your furry pet and everything else. So <laughs> I, 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 I just love talking about that. And during my days of Facebook live where it's like, you know, I was just testing it out and I say, have it in a different location in my home. And I had um, a mattress, which I used as soundproofing. My cat, Taylor, a golden tabby, jumps in front and starts rubbing against me. And he got more likes and comments than I did. And I said, this <laughs> actually works. So, <laughs> so, so if anybody has a dog or cat out there, don't worry about shutting them up. You know, just let them in. Have a little fun with it. You know, right. birds or snakes or gerbils, anything like that. Or if uh, kids start crying, it's like, you know, bring them on the show. It's like, you know. Show, show, show people like that you're real, a human, right? not a robot. You're right. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, oh you know gosh, what I thought yes. was a really interesting fact is that, um, you know, a lot of people sometimes are shy, but they have dreams of doing these things, like doing a podcast or something. And then I was reading that a lot of um, frontline singers of these big bands, like Bon Jovi considered himself a shy person, but yet he sang in front of stadiums of hundreds and thousands of people with no problem, you know, like would you consider yourself an introvert or a shy person or do you think consider yourself an outgoing person you know something i've been asked that a lot and <clears throat> you know excuse me for that one i was i was uh, doing some research on that and uh, you know they think that radio people entertainment personalities are the strangest bunch but i'm i've been doing more and more research on this and i think what really hit me hit the nail on the head in this one I think it was, um, let's see, there's a couple of people. There was Janis Joplin on there who was notoriously very shy. And, of course, you know, she really? had to drink and, um, you know, yeah. try to get uh, in, extrovert and sing. It's like she's a really shy person, you know, just being around people. But when she gets on sing, she belts out, you know, 
amazing yeah. tunes and all that. And then there was also uh, Ethel Merman, who had a really annoying voice, but very talented, very funny comedian. And um, and she was a really shy person uh, when when speaking in front of everybody, but put the camera on her, give her a microphone, whatever. I mean, she she lights up like a, a Christmas tree. And of course, the story about Robin Williams, you know, everybody thinks Robin Williams is a really extrovert, but you read the story that he was very, very reclusive. He so was. He was, yeah. And um, it seemed to be a personality trait where I had is just like, you know, you know, I this is like me. I turn on and uh, put me in front of a microphone and do great. But then afterwards, it's like, you know, I'll be out. I'm just like, okay. It's like, what's next? You know, just go into yeah. a little box and then you, you just do some writing and uh, do some work around the house. And, um, you know, at, you know, for me, it's just like, you know, you know, there's people out there who just love people and, you know, handle it. But I just like to have a bounce. You know, I love right. being around people. But I like being in a space where I can just work on my hands, work on some projects and, and whatever else. In their days, I just like to sit down and write or there are days I like to, you know, just read the news, listen to music, or just be outside working on the garden with my wife, or just work on the yard, or go play with my dog, or just take, take Serena out somewhere, play with the kids a little bit, or just watch a show or something, listen to a radio and everything, or even like listen to a, or listen or watch a ball game as well, too. And, you know, back in the day when everything was free, now you got to pay for it. Yeah. There are days I just want to just, you know, just turn on a radio and just, listen to football on Sunday. That's one that I think that's really left. It's like, you know, listen to it on an actual radio, like a football game, like out here, it's the Minnesota Vikings or Denver Broncos, or, you know, by a long shot, the Green Bay Packers, even too, like, you know, the game of the week. So I'd be lucky enough. I just sit down, do a project and just have a thing by the radio. So that's just one of the things, you know, it's not going to be more common these days that, um, you know, a good portion of hosts, are introverted in ways, but it's like they have a quiet perspective. They like to listen to what's going on. You know, right. not everything's all about them. I mean, it gets boring, you know, having people talk about themselves all the time. It's like, it's like, what's the point of listening to talk about themselves? Right. You're supposed to be talking about the guests. So, exactly. so that is, that, that's really come to light these days. And I think I, I'm proud to say that, um, you know, I do fit, fit with those type of people. It's like their days, I like to be around people. Their days, I just like to just, you know, just work on things and just work on my hands. You know, that's just yeah. how I am. I'm, you know, I, I can agree with you. I feel the same way. You know, I, when I'm in front of a group of people and I have to speak, I could speak and I can, I could do it all, but you know, you've done I'm, really well with it too. Oh, thank you. But you know, I like my quiet time and I like to be, you know, I, I don't like being the center of attention, believe it or not. I like, you know, I like having that quiet time to myself, being with my family and doing the things I, I love the most, you know? So I think it, it is, you know, anybody, you know, can do it, you know, you know, and even if a person has a shy personality, if they love it, if they want to do it, they can do it. You know, you don't have to be outgoing to be in this business. Right. And it gets tiring after a while too, you know, you get attacked and uh, you know, whatever else. And uh, I read about these celebrities where you, you, you see them getting the fights, you know, football players, whatever it is. It's like they get in fights with a, uh, bodyguards, employees, or like, you know, fans and all that. And you hear them about, you know, you know, so-and-so got arrested and everything else. That is because the, these people are bugging the celebrities. They want their quiet time. They want to wind down yeah. and they need that time to wind down and they don't want to be bothered. And I was talking to a lady that uh, she serves at, at a, at a Texas um, steakhouse that uh, one of the coaches of the Houston Texans has his own spot and wants quiet time and nobody comes over, bugs him ask questions, get autographs, they want their quiet time. And there's people out there that really do need their quiet time. You know, yes. you know just just like just like many of us, there are days out of mind center of attention and days it's like, okay, it's just like, you know, just step back a little bit. And I and I like to uh cook as well too, just to um, you know, just to relax myself. It's like I like to, you know, just hand make a pizza or be on a grill, you know, cook yeah. a steak burgers, chicken, or whatever, or it's right. like, you know, I'll be creating pasta dishes, even using an air fryer. It's like, I'll have a little fun with that. <laughs> yeah, I have a little wine, put on a little music, and I'll just, you know, whip up a dish for my lovely wife, Serena, and my wonderful kids, and then their day, Serena and I will uh, cook together, too, so it all depends on the mood, and, um, you know, whatever else, their days will come up some great dishes, their days like, we'll just throw it in the air fryer and microwave, we're too bloody tired to cook so <laughs> and, and cook cooking uh food you know even especially healthy is also um you know takes the stress off of one person too and um yeah you know, create some delicious meals so that's another thing i love to do that's one of my next things i wouldn't mind doing is just having a little cooking show you know just yeah. to cook healthy dishes or or whatever else or i can just you know put a spin, different spin on pizza or it's like how to make a unique hamburger or whatever else you know there's 
more than one ways to uh, cook chicken, you know, you know, stuff yeah. like that. So, so we encourage you out there, be creative with food. It's like, you know, create your own, create your own dish. And you never know, it could get in a restaurant, it could make you money. Yeah, definitely. And that's what people look at today because society is on a go, go, go moving society. People don't, you know, they have a very stressful schedule. They come home. They don't want to be in the kitchen for a long time, but they want to be healthy. So, you know, finding those people that could teach them how to how to make quick, easy meals that are healthy and, you know, and that even ways that you can make food one day and last you through the week and, you know, and you could eat healthy the whole week. You know, these are things that people want to learn about. You know, you have so many cooking shows popping up all over the place. You got you have vegan shows, you know, vegan cooking shows. You have Italian. Um, you know, I had a, 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 a person on my show. She was an Italian chef, but she she cooked healthy and she she explained the difference about cooking healthy and not cooking healthy and how to be able to cook the food you love, but cook it in a healthy way, which I thought was great because you don't have to do what the restaurants do. You don't have to pour on the butter and pour on all these different artificial adjectives to, to, to have a really good meal. There's lots of ways you could do it and you could be healthy about it. So yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. I'd love to see you doing a cooking show. I want to see it. Mm -hmm. and and, and plus also, too, the thing I learned in France is that uh, the French get disgusted by us pouring like, you know, half a bottle yes. of uh, salad dressing. They just, you know, few drops and that's it. You know, you know, that sort of thing. And uh, the thing I learned about, um, you know, you know, the Hispanics, especially living in Mexico, they despise Taco Bell. And they said <laughs> it's like eating dog food from a can. So it's like they like to create their own food. They create their from from scratch their own hands, their own vegetables from the garden and their own meats and everything. And um, I and, and I worked a job one time where I'd be in um, Western North Dakota pretty much all day servicing AT&T clients, you know, fixing electronics and give a little speeches and everything else. I, I stop at a, a, a mini little taco stand in Arnagar, North Dakota, which is up by Williston in the oil patch, a tiny little taco stand, you know, just like three bucks, you know, just Three street tacos, and they're delicious. I mean, you don't have to go to a big name restaurant. You can just find little mom and pop shops, and they make the best food on the planet out there. I was going to so, say, th those mom and pop shops make the best food, you know, and it's, you know, most of those places, the food is fresh, the ingredients is fresh, and that's what makes the big difference. And mm -hmm. that's what you get full with those small portions when the, the food is fresh. Mm -hmm. and, and they also want your money. They also want your business as well, too. And we first came to North Dakota. We stopped at a little um, burger and uh, fry shop, which is uh, next to a bank, next to a gas station. It's right by City Hall. Everything's all bunched. And of course, you know, we we order like a big thing of burgers and fries. It's got like a triple burger. They give a monster plate of fries. It was like, it was just like four seventy five. It was like, you know, really cheap and everything else. But it's just like, you know, you pay four seventy five. We'll get like, you know, this much or this much and everything. Oh, they give you a plate full, I'll tell you. So <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, we just we okay. just have that. But uh, but yes, and um the all pizza places is like, you know, they give you big slices, not these small ones too, and they load mm -hmm. the ingredients too. So yeah, uh, that's another of my favorite things. Go to these um, you know, small pizza places and they give you like you know, all the ingredients, all the stuff on there, they serve you well, but the chains is like you have to like, you know put on a certain amount or you're gonna lose a company money, you know, everything like that. So yeah, we just have that. It's different. Now, before we go, can you give like a couple of tips to people like for a successful podcast? And what would you tell people if you had to tell them a couple of things, what would be the best advice that you would give them? I think the best advice I give the people is simply is that uh, don't be afraid to try, you know, you know, re do your research, do your homework, research your guests, sit down and, uh, you know, prepare questions. It's almost like, you know, you're talking to them, like in a conversation, find out what they do and also look for the, um, the best equipment possible without uh, paying a ton of money. And I think that's another thing a lot of podcasters fail at that. They buy all the, the best equipment, the the up-to-date gadgets and everything else. And all you really knew is a, is a microphone, just headphones and a computer. You just simply just plug it in. You don't have to have all these fancy devices. You just simply get a microphone, you plug and you play and everything else, get good recording software that doesn't crap out or pay a fortune. And of course, you know, spend a little on equipment, but make sure it's good equipment, not uh cheap from back in the day radio shack and or like you know <laughs> some some chinese outfit you never heard of but um you know get some good equipment get good recording software and also you know get on the podcast you can also um do some editing do some work on and also be um be, dil be diligent what you do and be very passionate and also 
use your talents wisely as well, too. And um, you have to find it within yourself. If you have trouble, ask family, ask friends, go through some, um, you know, try some new job, try some new things and see what you're good at. And if you're still having trouble, you know, get some professional help to see what what skills you're good at and everything else. So, so the things I tell people podcasts is that, um, you know, don't be afraid to uh, get out there and try, you know, try a few podcasts and uh, get few people listen i mean don't be discouraged if you make mistakes that's like the only way to get better is improve and go up that's why i tell people excellent advice now where can people find you like when and where is your show okay you can find the mike widener show at www.themikewidenershow.com you can also um you know go on 40 podcast platforms including facebook soundcloud spreaker spotify and iheart radio also anchor fm itunes google play amazon audible apple music Coming soon to Podbean, Buzzsprout, Pandora, and TuneIn, Heard of Worldwide, Geo7, Radio Public, Himlay, and the YouTube channel. We're also on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and also LinkedIn as well, too. And uh, coming soon, we'll be on Discord. We're also on HamiltonRadio.net, Diamonds FM, Old e Radio, and a few networks coming soon. Make sure you take us with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Whitener Show on the YouTube channel. You can follow the Mike Whitener Show on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok today. And again, for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com. Check out the Mike Whitener Show podcast. T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, hoodies, baseball gear, and more. Makes great gifts 24-7. Also sponsored by our official sponsor, the Mike Widener Show, International War Ring author, Mia Moses, The Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. And the Mike Widener Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit www.sonicwebstudios.com today. You know, this has been amazing, Mike. Thank you so much for coming on the show. And thank you so much for giving such valuable input and showing people how anyone is capable of having a great podcast and the secrets and successes of podcasts. And so thank you so much and everything you do. I really enjoyed this time. It's my pleasure, Stacy, And thanks for having me on. You're a terrific guest. You're a terrific host. And you've got a great future ahead of you. And we definitely wish you all the best. Thank you so much. <laughs>